Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt with the YouTube channel Bleepin' Jeep. Operation Cheap Jeep is complete. Check it out. Let's do a walk around. So this is it. You guys have seen the build from start to finish. You even got to see it wheel in the last video. So I'm super impressed with this thing. At first, I was uh, not a fan of ZJ's, but uh, I really like this. It rides well, it drives well, it's nice and soft, uh, it did really great out on the trail, it looks good, so uh, there's a lot of pluses to this thing. Let's go over it real quick, what we've done. So for those of you who maybe skipped to the end here, let's start off with the lift. One of the first things that we did was we took the uh, front springs off, put them on the rear. We got some new springs for the front, and we lifted this thing about three and a half to four inches. The front springs are Cherokee springs, I think four and a half inch Cherokee springs, which should relate to a little bit smaller on the ZJ. And then the taking the front springs off and moving them to the rear gives you about three and a half inches in the rear. I also made uh, my own version of some cheap sway bar disconnects and what else did we do up here? Oh, we put a locker locker in the front differential right there. So that is a lunchbox locker. We also took the rear arms off and we moved them to the front and I had some shocks that were better than the stock shocks and I put those up in there. On the rear we used JK control arms, so if you're interested in doing that mod, go check out the video for more details on that. And then we got the track bar relocation bracket from Rough Country. Um, it already had a Flowmaster exhaust back here, so it sounds really good. What else did we do? We Lincoln locked the rear, so we welded the rear diff, and uh, so now it is completely locked all the time in the rear. And of course those springs that I told you about and also I had some shocks lying around once again um, and we put all this in the budget so coming up there's going to be a budget video and I'll explain how much everything cost if you're interested in that. So I also swapped the transfer case from the NP249 to the 231. I put a transfer case drop bracket here and when the first time I went wheeling, the shifter linkage broke completely off. And so I went to Azzy Design Works and got a shift linkage from them and made it fit. Even though it's not for ZJ, um, I used their TJ one, modified it a little bit, and it all worked out. So a lot of people were asking about the swapping of the transfer case and more detail on that. There's a few good videos online you should check out. Um, I didn't have to do a lot of work since mine was from the same year Cherokee. So since it was the same year, the input shaft matched up and I didn't have to swap that. Um, everything just worked out. I didn't even have to get new drive shafts or anything. So it was just a direct swap except for the linkage. So the tires are 265 75 16s, which is basically a 31 or so. Um, if you saw that video, people were asking what's the brand. So it's Desert Hawk uh, Achilles. And I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but uh, so far they have rode very well on the trail and on the highway. So there's not any road noise. Um, and it's a pretty nice looking aggressive tire. But the best thing about them was that they were cheap. $536, I think, for four of them. Let's take a look at the front here. If you remember, I chopped the front bumper down and I got this winch plate from Rough Country and it goes in between the stock bumper and then I got that uh, Rough Country winch from a scratch and dent sale on eBay. And so that's what all that is. It looks pretty good. After I chopped that down, I cut quite a bit off of the bottom of the bumper there and angled it up at the side. So 
So for the rear bumper, I just made that out of steel. That was probably the most popular video of this entire build. And I'm really surprised that the entire build is the most popular of all the builds so far. So the cheap Jeep beat out the Scorpion Crawler, it beat out the Zombie Jeep, and the Hope Floats Jeep for the number of views. So apparently you guys like this thing. So that really surprises me. I would have thought that the Scorpion Crawler would have been better watched, but it was this one. So I'm not sure though if it's the cheap Jeep aspect or if it's the new style that I took on, which was more of a vlog style. So in the comments below, let me know what it was about this build that you like so much. I'll make sure to use that in the future builds. We're not done with the walk around yet, but before I forget, I wanted to mention that during the Smoky Mountain Jeep invasion, the weekend of August 26th, Pull Apart and I are going to be raffling off the cheap Jeep. We're gonna have the cheap Jeep on display, the Scorpion Crawler on display, and when I go home on Sunday, I'm gonna be one less Jeepless owner. So somebody is going to win the cheap Jeep. So make sure that you come out and check out that event. They've got lots of cool vendors, lots of cool Jeep stuff, lots of Jeeps on display and Jeeps to see. So come check it out, have a great time. We'll see you there. So let's go over some pros and cons. What did I like about the cheap Jeep and what didn't I like? Well, I did like the sound. The sound of the V8 was great. It had a lot of power, more than I'm used to. Um, I liked the suspension, so it was really soft and it, was, it had a great ride for what it is, for how cheap it is. Um, so the coil springs front and rear, I think, really did help out a lot. I like the fact that it's got an aggressive look to it, but you could still take it to the grocery store and you wouldn't be out of place. And of course, I like the fact that it's cheap. We did this thing on a major, major budget, but when you go out to the grocery store or someplace, people don't look at you like you're in the wrong neighborhood. You know what I mean? In fact, when this thing came out, it was a top of the line vehicle with all the bells and whistles. One of the things I don't like about it though is that it hasn't been real reliable. I think the main issue here was the wiring. The wiring was just not up to par and there's just a lot of wiring gremlins that have to be figured out on these ZJs and I'm not the only one. I've heard a lot of people mention the same thing. Another thing I don't like about it is there's just not a whole lot of aftermarket support. So the ZJ didn't have nearly as much aftermarket support as say an XJ or the JK or something like that. What that means is when you go to upgrade, a lot of times you'll have to either spend a lot more money or you'll have to build it yourself. And the last thing I can think of is things just got cheap at Chrysler over the years. Look at this headlight. I mean, how can you get that aligned if it doesn't even sit in there properly? And check out the door panels. I mean, these things, if you pull too hard, you'll just pull the door panel right off. Other than that, though, it's a going machine. If you haven't seen the video of it wheeling, go back and check that thing out. For a vehicle on 31s, I'm really surprised it did really well. Let's take a look on the inside and in the engine compartment. Looks pretty clean in here right now, but uh, it took a lot of work to get uh, some of the things that were in here fixed up, but I think that was due to lack of maintenance for the most part. This was something funny that happened. What, yesterday I was washing this thing, so I covered that in plastic, and then when I went to go start it up, I forgot to take the plastic off. It completely crushed that like an aluminum can. But it's the cheap Jeep, it still works, so I'm gonna leave it that way. And the interior interior looks the same as the day that I bought it. The only thing I've done in here is add the steering wheel cover. And I changed out this bezel when I changed the transfer case. Other than that, it still has the crappy old ZJ seats that are torn. Okay guys, don't forget to come win this thing in August. I'll leave the link to that event down below. Thanks to Pull Apart for sponsoring the entire Cheap Jeep build and thanks to you guys for watching it more than any other build that I've done. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think is the best thing about this and why you guys watch. And I will see you next time.
Hey guys, if you enjoyed the Cheap Jeep series, I want you to do something for me. Right down there is the subscribe button. I want you to unsubscribe from this channel. That's right, I want you to unsubscribe. Now, if you enjoyed the Cheap Jeep series, if you've ever gotten any use out of any bleepin' Jeep video, I want you to subscribe again. When you do this time, when you click the subscribe button, right next to it, there's a little blue bell. Well, it's not blue yet. You need to click that bell and it's gonna turn blue. What that's gonna do, YouTube has become like Facebook and they only show you what they think you want to see. Sometimes my videos aren't gonna pop up in your feed unless you click that blue bell button. If you do, then every time I upload a video, you're gonna get a notification so that you won't miss another video. So, unsubscribe, resubscribe, click that blue bell. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, guys. I'm trying to teach you as best as I can. I'm trying to help you out. I hope you can help me out, too. I was kind of sad about this. Right here is the damage that I got bouncing off that tree in the wheeling video. My bad, guys.